Hello, my name is LC. I'm the owner of the Vision Production, and on this channel, I talk about cultures. For those who are new here, welcome. And for those who are coming back, welcome back. And for those who are just new, and if this is sounding good for you, um, please subscribe and also ring the notification bell. For those who are already familiar, if this is something that you can like, uh, share the video with others, please do so. Today's video is following up with the series of different videos that I have been making about my trip with a friend to Zimbabwe. And um, it, was, it, it was an interesting uh, trip. And this video also I'm following up with um, the channel, Our Black Utopia. I'll put the link down where they made a video, You Want to Be a Traveler, Not a, a Tourist. And I wanted, um, when I listened to that video, I realized actually my trip to Zimbabwe with my friend was more of a traveler, but not a tourist. It wasn't a tourist at all. Uh, there is a list of things that a tourist do, and there's a, a different list of things that a traveler actually do. So when you listen to that video of our black, our black Utopia, you can actually also understand what they are saying, what is a traveler and what is a tourist. So today I am going to give you a list of uh, our budget. That's I'm just focusing on the budget because I have, uh, you know, like a, a list or like a series of videos of different things of our trip. Our trip was full a month, four weeks. It was from March 18th to April 19th. Um, and we were, we were traveling. We were not during tourist events. We were traveling. And everything that we did was actually in the travel mode, meaning we were with the locals. We were living like the locals. We were doing everything like the locals. And... We finish our trip almost like that. Here and there we did something. But as you are going to hear the budget, you are going to see clearly it had nothing to do with a whole lot of tourism. It has a lot, of, lot to do with really image ourselves with the locals. For me, as a Zimbabwean, as a Zimbabwean it wasn't like new to me. But for my friend, for the very first time in Africa, it was totally new to live a life of really just totally, you know, living like a local in, in Zimbabwe and Africa. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull out the list. And I'm going to read because I cannot just remember everything, you know. I put this list in six category. And um, the sixth category is, you know, um, accommodation, which actually at some point we did have an Airbnb. So I have accommodation, then I have transportation, then I have shopping, shopping like grocery shopping, not like shopping, buying clothes or souvenirs or any of that, but really just grocery shopping while we were there for food. Uh, then I also have eating out as we go out and just eat once in a while. We did that. I put that too. Then... I put a category of phones because when you travel and you are in another country and either there's different ways of doing this. Some people, they totally buy a phone there and they use their phone there. Either way it goes, there's some um, money that you need to pay. Either you buy the phone, then you get the service. For me, I always go with my phone, change the SIM card and then, you know, get the service there. It's, it's like the cheapest way. So the phones, first of all, have to be uh, open phones. They have to be, you know, already the company that you are using in the country have to tell you that phone is open already. And then you can use it there. They just take out the SIM card. They put their SIM card there. They give you a different number and you can do that. Uh, my friend, though, end up doing that, but also she had bought already a service that was going to cater for her while she is outside the country. So there's different ways, like I say, that you can do this form, uh, how you can do it. And also we had a hotel. 
So this wasn't at all in the budget. It just happened to be. And we decided we were going to take a hotel tonight for situations the way it was going. We just decided that day we were going to take a hotel. So this list is not going to give a whole breakdown like where, what, this, that. In this list also, we had uh, a breakdown. We actually like rented a car, my sister's car actually. We sort of like rented it. And during that time, the car broke down. So we have like a little extra expenses on that, that maybe normally, but they can go into the miscellaneous, that I don't have that category of miscellaneous because again, I'm going to tell you this, when visiting Zimbabwe, for me, visiting my family, miscellaneous is so much, meaning you, I'm arriving at my aunt, you take $10 and you give to your aunt, you, you find your, your cousins and you give them $2 each. And, you know, just, you know, money that you just, most of the time you don't really count. And I did not put it in this. Why? Because most people, when you travel, you are going to experience a country you know, I, I don't think you are going to do these kind of things. That's why I did not put that kind of money in here. I put the kind of money that I really believe people, when they travel, they're going to use. So I have my categories here. The Airbnb, we had an Airbnb for a total of two weeks. I would say maybe not exactly like two weeks, 14 days, but it was more like maybe... The first time was like five days, and then the other one was, I think, seven days. We were in the Airbnb. So I would say closer to two weeks, but not exactly two weeks of the Airbnb. And both times, for the time that we had it, both times, sorry, my list just uh, disappeared. Okay, for both times, we had a total of $545 for the Airbnb. That means almost a half of our time in Zimbabwe was in an Airbnb and we paid $545. The first Airbnb was $245 and the second Airbnb was $300, I think it was. $300 and it became $545. Then transportation, I always tell people transportation in Zimbabwe it's one of the most expensive thing because uh, petrol, which is in America you call gas, petrol is very expensive there. Like um, when I calculated when I was going there just to have a rough estimate of how much the petrol is, here a gallon we pay $3. I would say multiply that by four. No, by three, three and a half, three point, something like that. So there, to get a gallon, you have to pay somewhere around $8 or something like that. It's really very expensive. I mean, because they go by liter and it goes four times a liter into a gallon. And a liter usually, it could run somewhere around 169. So you do the math, 170 and so on. So you know, it was really expensive. And we did not have a car. We did not rent a car here. This is taking buses, taking the uh, Uber type of cars. Uh, they have what uh, their own Ubers there. I'll talk about this in another t video, I think, where I'm going to share with you like the phone service, how the phone service really work. And then I'm going to talk about the transportation and um, the buses, the different things like that, the taxis, the Uber, the, all the different ways of uh, uh, having your transportation there. So transportation was 543. I would say the whole trip. That means from airport to our Airbnb, from our Airbnb to different things that we're doing, shopping, uh, because we didn't have a car, right? So going shopping back and forth, going maybe to visit the families, you know, friends, um, all that transportation that we were doing, we're taking different things, combis, this other transportation, I'll talk about that in another video. But there's different ways that you can have your transportation. So all those things 
cost about $543. Food, and when I talk about food, I'm talking about shopping, the one that we went to the grocery store and pick up different things, tomatoes, you know, cabbage, you know, whatever, meat, fish, whatever you're going to cook, because we cooked this whole trip we actually cooked our meals. So the Airbnb saved is a real good thing for us because we cooked and we, you know, we had the real meals. So that one cost us 374.81. And also I need to point out this. This was not just in our Airbnb that we had almost two weeks. This also was when we travel and we are in the countryside, when we arrive there, just the common thing when, you know, I'm coming from America, everybody expect, you know, I'm the one to take care of everything. <laughs> they take care of us, but also I know that, you know, most people, they are struggling. I cannot just come there and wait for them to do everything for me. So we were also buying basic needs, like the cornmeal that we use every day or the, um, the meat or something like that, tomatoes, whatever they use, it's really simple meals. But, you know, I would help, we would help with just uh, buying some of that grocery. So this actually, this 374.81 is from the Airbnb, the food that we're buying, and also going into the country and helping out with the groceries when we arrived there. Each family that we went into, we were helping out with some grocery. So, you know, depending on the size of the family. And then these groceries were not feeding like a few people. Some places they're feeding like maybe 10 people. Some places were feeding like maybe seven. Some people were feeding like maybe five, including us, you know. So, you know, it's few times we had real small families, you know, when we buy these groceries. So the groceries were catering for a lot of people. And um, that was 374.81. Then eating out, we had also to experience, my friend had to experience what it is sitting down in a restaurant. What kind of a restaurant do we have? What kind of food do they have? All these kind of things. So we sat down in one of um, the restaurant. Actually, I'll talk more about that too. You know, the restaurant is a, it's actually origin of Portuguese, I think it's um, uh, Nando's. And we said we ate there one time. And then my friend um, ate somewhere which was very traditional. I didn't go. Um, that's another piece of the whole travel that I did not do, <laughs> that she did. But she, she ate somewhere very traditional. We went uh, with a friend and ate somewhere traditional. Then we took again some of the family members and we went and ate again in another place. All that came up to about $202. And this eating out... Um, I think the first time we were about six people or seven. And the bill, I think, was around $57. And the second time, I think we were about, oh, how many were we? Two, four, six, eight. About eight people or ten. I think we were quite a bit. And this bill cost about $65. And I'm talking about real, a good meal. Like I had a whole, you know, fish, like a tilapia, a whole tilapia, big tilapia, you know, um, meal and some salad and, you know, some French fries. I mean, a really good meal, you know. And um, it cost uh, for about eight people, it cost us about $65. And uh, three people, I think, at a traditional restaurant, it cost us maybe around 20 some dollars. I don't remember. Somewhere around there. It wasn't much. But anyway, you know, so that's eating out, not groceries, but eating out. And then the phones, when we arrived there, we had to go and do all kinds of things, you know, with our phones to make them work and get what they call data for WhatsApp, because WhatsApp is widely used there. So we had to put WhatsApp, we had to put the data for WhatsApp, uh, talk and text, so that we can communicate with our families here and so on. And I think all that for a full month, we paid 
$41. That's for two people for a full month. We paid $41. And then we had this particular day where we were just in town and we needed to go back to the to my sister's place and 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 wake up very early morning and come back to town and take a bus. So we decided we were just going to stay in town and take and and sleep at a holiday inn. And that was a low high. I think everybody can know what's a holiday inn, and they have their standards almost across the board. You know, it's the same. You know, but the service. I'll talk about that another time. The service were very good. I mean, really good to the point where they they made the breakfast for us when we were leaving at four thirty in the morning. They prepared some breakfast for us to take. I mean, that was amazing. You know. So we had that. That one was $184. So this in all, the total came up to be $1,888.81 for the total of the whole expense while we were in Zimbabwe. Like I say, uh, there is some other monies that were going that I did not count here. Like I give my aunt, you know, twenty dollars here, my sister ten over here, and you know, that kind of money is not counted here, you know. And I, the reason I already told you, you are not going to do that most likely. So I counted the things that I believe if you go to Zimbabwe and you are a traveler. This is the kind of money you are looking at. And this budget is for two people. And I also want to think that this budget, one way plus minus, could be reduced to a certain point because we were traveling. We traveled quite a bit, going to different places. And when we arrived there, like I say, we had to buy food, not just for us. We had to buy food for the family. So that budget, again, I have a feel that it could have cut maybe by, you know, a couple hundred or, you know, I don't know, somewhere, you know, traveling money. And uh, if you, let's say you are just going to be in one city or you go to two cities uh, that you are going to maybe two weeks here, two weeks here. Because, again, when you are a traveler, you don't want to jump up and down, you know, every other day, you know. You are a traveler. You want to experience the place with the people and what they do, where they shop, what kind of food they, they have, all those things, you know, you want to experience. And I would say the least you could do this is really one week. I would say that's the least of the least you could do this. But you need maybe two weeks. So if you are going to have two weeks, that means you can only travel with one month. You can only go to maybe three places two places. And if you're going to say 10 days here, 10 days here, which is still fair, I think you can do about three places. And that traveling amount uh, depend again, if you're going to do it the local people way, you know, then you can cut a lot of the other unnecessary expenses. You can actually lower it down because from one town to the next, most of it is from with good buses, maybe $10, $15. Some of them, they might cost a slightly more, but mostly about $10, that's with a good bus, reliable bus, bus that doesn't stop all over the place. Um, you know, uh, good bus, you know, you can go with about $10 or $15. So if you go to three places, you already cut quite a bit on the expense, on the, on the transportation right there. And then you go there, you use the $53 that I mentioned. I did not itemize exactly like shopping at this Airbnb how much. But I remember, I think both times we shop at the Airbnb was about 50, 59, 53. So if you say you went to two places, you'll be shopping like that, you know, that should be sufficient, meaning you have your juices, you have your vegetable, you have fruits, you have meats, you have whatever you want to cook for the week or 10 days. Uh, most of the time we were leaving food. We couldn't, 
you know, use most of the things that we bought. So, so this is it in a nutshell about my budget uh, going to Zimbabwe with my friend. I wanted to bring this to you because... I traveled with my friend who don't know anything about Zimbabwe and you know I wanted she wanted actually to make it an experience not just like a tourist experience everybody know big buildings they know big hotels they know you know all these things where you go there's a swimming pool and all these kind of amazing things so she wanted to experience something different something new and those videos of course they are coming just keep watching they're coming um you know so you know that's why we did it this way and it was amazing so this that's the budget i think everybody can look and see if that's a reasonable budget and i think i might talk about the airfare i think was around 1400 for a round trip so 1400 um plus the 1889 um, 14 times 2, 1400 times 2 plus the 1889 divide by 2, you know, you get the math, okay? So this is it for my budget to Zimbabwe with a friend and living, traveling to Zimbabwe, living as the locals in Zimbabwe. That's, that was our budget, slightly more because we live with family and take care of them too. So thank you so much for watching and if you are new, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. And you keep watching more of the videos that I have on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.